Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradi, and here at the Navy League's annual Sea Air Space uh, Symposium and Trade Show in National Harbor, just outside Washington, D.C., and we're honored to have with us uh, as our first guest for this uh, great show, uh, the Chief, Vice Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Bill Moran. Sir, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Vago. Great to be here, as always. Uh, it was a pleasure listening to your comments. Obviously, all eyes are now on the budget. Uh, I know you're not trying to get out in ha ahead of the CNO, but as much as you can, what's the message he's going to be delivering? Uh, to Congress when he testifies this week? Well, I, the message will be consistent with what we've been saying for the last several months, which is as we move further into the year without a budget, and especially an amended budget, which provides some much needed cash to do things like ship maintenance, depot maintenance, pay our people, all of those sorts of things, or it's going to get more and more painful the longer we go. Uh, I think you know we're August, or I'm excuse me, April 28th, we. Uh, we run out of the current CR. And so likelihood is that we're gonna go right up to that date and then hopefully Congress will uh, provide a budget to us and we won't be on a continuing resolution or face government shutdown at the end of April. Obviously, there is talk of a government shutdown. Obviously, you know, are you guys making any contingency plans budgetarily that either includes a potential shutdown in it or that you just won't be able to get the amount of money you need to do what you can, even if that includes a, a longer CR, for example. Well, unfortunately, uh, Vago, we've been down this parade before. We we've, we know how to do this. It's not something we want to do, uh, but if we we end up in a government shutdown, uh, we know what we need to do. So uh, are we planning for it? Do we want it? Absolutely not. Uh, are we uh, prepared if it happens? We, we we have enough experience at this to know what we have to do. There was a lot of enthusiasm uh, with President Trump's election that there was going to be a big naval modernization, you know, military modernization in general, naval modernization in particular, $54 billion proposed uh, in spending, and you get to keep the OCO money as well. So that is a very, very robust uh, amount of money. But the question is, it looks increasingly uncertain whether or not all of that money or even a fraction of that money is going to be made available. How are you guys prioritizing your plans? Obviously, we have uh, Ohio replacement, the Columbia program, that's sacrosanct and you're protecting that. But what are some of the balances you guys are going to make between readiness and acquisition in the event that you don't get the amount of money that everybody hopes that you would? Well, yeah, well, Vago, we'll deal with that if it becomes reality. I think the the most important thing to know is that anybody we send forward who or is operating forward today during this continuing resolution or whatever uh, budget landscape uh, emerges here, we're going to make sure they're ready to do their job. That that's priority number one. Uh, and then and then we have to start weighing the the balance between acquisition uh, because a lot of this money is is if under a CR limits you contractually in what you can do so no new contracts are allowed to be authorized so that limits you uh, every account gets taxed at levels uh, arbitrarily without any input from the services so that really it's it's kind of done if you go into another CR I mean in terms of our flexibility and discretion and what we can do um, on the other hand if we don't get a budget and we go into government shutdown that's a whole nother ball game where we'll have to pool our resources to make sure that guys and gals forward are able to do what we've asked them to do how do you respond to some of the criticism that folks level is that the military services aren't using the readiness money that they're already getting, that, that they're not able to absorb the amount of money that's even coming down the pipeline. How do you respond to folks who say, you guys got plenty of uh, money as it is, you don't need any more money? No, well, it's just not true. The fact, the fact is that um, we, didn't, we have put a series of proposals forward to the government, to uh, the administration, that we believe and we're confident that we can execute if given the, the money. The longer you go in the year, the more difficult that becomes. But we're confident right now that if we were given an amended budget and more of that cash you talked about, readiness money or otherwise, we could spend it and do it well. If you had a magic wand, what would you fix? Well, readiness is, is top priority because you've, if you're going to have a Navy that's operating, it's got to be ready. And it's got to be prepared to do whatever ne the needs of the nation are. Are you satisfied with the level of readiness you guys have now? And how would you rate the readiness of the overall force? The readiness today is good. Uh, what I what we all worry about is what becomes of readiness if we don't get a budget and so that's uh, you don't normally feel the effects of lower uh, budgets for several months because you can live for a while on the readiness you have the banked readiness you have but that bank of readiness is getting 
thinner and thinner over time. So uh, we really do need the budget uh, at the end of this month. You know, you're juggling a whole series of priorities. And when, as you're looking at that, you know, Sea Lift needs modernization, obviously. You've got a readiness challenge. You've also got some big programs that are coming down the pike. I know that I've got about 15 seconds of your time left. But will you have to make, could you be forced to be making trade offs and looking, for example, and saying, hey, look, I may have to not get as many F 18s in order to be able to keep the sub rates going? I mean, do you see those sorts of choices? And are you in the CNO and the Navy leadership debating? backup and alternative plans as you make your plans for the future? Every day we have to make trade-offs, uh, regardless of the budget situation. Uh, so when we get a top line, when we know what our final checking account looks like, uh, then we'll, we'll make those trades as appropriate, both for the good of the service in the short run and the good of the service in the long run. Uh, and, and of course, the priorities uh, will be mixed depending on what that top line looks like. We just have to make sure that we take care of our sailors who are operating in places around the world where it's dangerous, it's challenging, and they need to have everything we've got to make sure they can do their job. Sir, thanks very much. You're welcome. Thanks.